Hello everyone from Ford City. This is Chuck King on August 9th, 2020. This is Sunday. We're doing the Bible study every day. And today we are at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. So remember, he was giving the Sermon on the Mount, speaking directly to disciples, but there was a large crowd of people, probably thousands, there listening and watching. And so after he gave that sermon in the last couple of chapters, the multitudes were following him. Verse 2, and behold, a leper came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So here's a man with the skin disease, leprosy, falling down or worshiping the Lord and seeking him to make him clean. Verse 3, then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So this is a key to answer prayer, is to know the will of God when you're seeking him for your prayer request. And in this case, the man's the man's uh, seeking the Lord for his healing was definitely in the will of God. Jesus made it clear, I am willing. So Jesus went about uh, doing the supernatural work that John later said in his gospel, that if everything was written down, the whole world could not contain the books describing his ministry. What a powerful ministry of signs and wonders and healings. The Holy Spirit worked through the anointing of Jesus Christ. So the man was cleansed of his leprosy immediately. Verse 4, And Jesus said to him, See see that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priests, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. So Jesus is still operating under the old covenant and the the laws of the, the temple worship and the regulation uh, to go. Uh, to the priest if you are healed from a skin disease so that he can he can uh, confirm that. And uh, so Jesus didn't want this publicized. Uh, it's interesting. Verse number five, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. So now he's He's in uh, the town of Capernaum, which was along the Sea of Galilee, and he, he actually lived there for a time. And this Roman centurion, who uh, probably wasn't a Jew, came and uh, begged Jesus to come and heal his servant who was paralyzed and tormented. Verse 7, and Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. So this centurion was demonstrating his faith and trust in the Lord just to speak the word of healing without even coming to his house to pray for for his servant. Verse 9, for I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, And he goes, and to another come, and he comes, and to my servant do this, and he does it. So the centurion understood authority and realized that uh, the chain of command always operated with orders from above. And so he had confidence from his earthly experience that this son of God, this miraculous Savior, could simply say the word, and those orders would be carried out. Verse 10 And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. So this confirms the man was not a Jew, but a Gentile. And Jesus was surprised at that kind of faith being demonstrated by by this man. Verse 11, And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is prophesying the great harvest of the Gentiles coming from from every nation who would join the Jewish believers in, in heaven. Verse 12, but the sons of the kingdom 
will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Of course, he's speaking about the unbelieving Jews who had the opportunity to believe and be saved, but because of their stubbornness, they would reject the Son of God and refuse to be saved and would end up in eternal judgment. Verse 13, And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so it will be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. So Jesus declared that this man's faith, the fact that he believed, he, he was clinging to, trusting in, and relying on the words of Jesus Christ, and therefore his servant was healed during that same hour. Powerful message here even to us to understand that faith moves the mountain, that faith causes the hand of God to move, and unbelief causes the judgment of God to come upon a person. Verse 14, Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. And when you go on a tour of Israel, they often take you in Capernaum to a place, the ruins of a house, which they believe they've tracked down to be the ruins of Peter's house. And it wasn't just a small place. It actually was pretty large. And so um, Jesus came into that house and uh, realized Peter's uh, mother-in-law was sick. Verse 15, so he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and served them. What power flowed from the hands of Jesus Christ that fevers would completely disappear with the touch of the master's hand. Praise the Lord. Verse 16, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. So now we, we have this mention of the demon possessed people and not just a few, but many. So there were problems in Israel with demon possession among many people. Now, how could there not be problems today in our population when these fallen angels, these demons, simply leave a person when they die and go to other people? These demons move around and possess people and have done so from, from their, their fall from the presence of the Lord at the rebellion of Satan. And now these demons need to be dealt with because they, they like to live inside of people and torment and possess them. So Jesus was casting them out or making them leave the people with his word. And, and he also healed the sick. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So the Isaiah's prophecy of the, the miraculous power of the Messiah, healing and uh, healing sicknesses and taking care of even demon possession was fulfilled by Jesus doing these minis this ministry of casting out demons and healing the sick. So he's always fulfilling old covenant prophecies about the Messiah. Verse 18, and when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Now he's being crowded by huge numbers of people. He could hardly move or minister. So he wanted to go and go to another place. Verse 19, then a certain scribe came and said to him, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. So this Jewish leader came and uh, expressed his desire to follow Jesus. And what did Jesus say? He said, verse 20, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Meaning, do you want to follow me? And I have, I don't, I'm like homeless. I'm a homeless person. Even the foxes and birds have a place to, to rest, but I'm always moving. Do you want to follow me? basically is what Jesus was saying. Verse 21, and another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Now, this is a disciple uh, asking Jesus to let him go and see to it that his father 
was taken care of and buried. And verse 22, Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. So these responses are not what you might expect from the Lord, but he's telling his disciples that the work that they are doing is so important that it doesn't matter that they even have a place to live or that they can take care of the needs of their families. It's more important to follow Jesus. Let the others who don't want to follow Jesus take care of their families. That's basically what he's saying. Verse 23, now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Verse 24, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea or a storm so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. So after all this, this long day of ministry and being, being pressed in by so many people and so many needs, he would be physically worn out as a human being. God living in human flesh would still face the weariness of living in a human body. And so they're out in the middle of the lake, the Sea of Galilee, and there was a storm, and storms often would just pop up out of nowhere on that lake. And the, the waves were crashing over the boat, but he was back there sleeping. Verse 25, Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. So they woke him up, verse 26, but he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So these responses from Jesus are not what many preachers would try to lead you to believe that Jesus was such a, a uh, always such a uh, non-confrontational, uh, gentle person. He was always truthful. Yes, he was loving, but he would tell them directly what they needed to hear, whether it was, you really want to follow me? I have nowhere to live. Uh, you know, you have to follow me. Let your family take care of your, uh, bearing your father. And now, uh, even in the midst of a storm with the waves crashing over the boat, he responds to them that they lack faith. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid just because the boat's about to sink from the waves crashing over it? You need, you need more faith. And so he demonstrated faith and rebuked the storm, and everything calmed down. Verse 27, so the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? So day after day, Jesus doing these signs and wonders continued to cause even his disciples to be surprised. Verse number 28, <coughs> excuse me. When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. So this is a, a story of the demon-possessed men who lived in the in the graveyard in among the tombs and they were uh, they were wild men and people were afraid to even pass that way because they were out of control violent verse 29 and suddenly they cried out saying what have we to do with you Jesus you son of God have you come here to torment us before the time so now we have the demon speaking through these demon-possessed men, speaking directly to Jesus. They know him. They know who he is and is the title of Son of God. And they know that they're facing torment at a certain point. And James tells us that the demons believe and tremble. And here's an example of it, how they know that their judgment is coming and they're trying to avoid it before a certain time. <clears throat> Verse 30, now a good way off from them, there was a herd of many swine feeding. So pigs were feeding there. Verse 31, so the demons begged him saying, if you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. Did you know the demons prayed to Jesus? That's what this is saying. They were praying. They were 
They were seeking him, begging him, that they knew he would cast them out, and they wanted an alternative place to go into the pigs if they couldn't be in these men. In verse 32, and he said to them, go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine, and suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. So Jesus actually answered their request. You might say he answered their prayer and let them go out into the herd of swine, thousands of pigs, and their, their madness, their demonic madness, caused these swine to go over the cliff into the water. Very interesting situation. Verse 33, Then those who kept them fled, and they went away into the city and told everything, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. So the men who were watching the pigs ran back to the city and testified to what had happened to these men and to the pigs. Verse 34, and behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region. So a massive crowd from the city went out to see Jesus, but instead of, of believing and embracing him as the Son of God and his powerful ministry, they prayed to him. They prayed, please leave us. What a sad story. What a sad story we have. <clears throat> Demons begging Jesus. We have people begging Jesus, praying. And the Lord's mighty ministry demonstrated here to bring deliverance to these demon-possessed men, yet the people of that region reject him and ask him to leave. And this is, this is what human nature is like. We have human nature that even though they see and experience the Son of God, they, they want nothing to do with him. And this is what we're facing in, in our culture, in our, in our generation. We are facing those who on, are on their way to eternal judgment, yet when we preach the gospel to them, they don't believe and they don't they don't even want us around them. What a terrible situation. <clears throat> and this is why the Lord can only work with people who humble themselves, who humble themselves and seek him, and who believe like like this leper, like this centurion, those who demonstrated faith. And God moved in a mighty way in their lives. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you come to him, you must believe that he exists. He's the great I am. And he rewards them who diligently seek him. If you want to find the Lord, you must seek him. You can't ask him to leave. You can't ignore him and walk away in unbelief. You must seek after him, cling to, trust, and rely on Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us, for this opportunity to study your word together. Father, may your name be glorified in our lives. May we be those who respond by clinging to, trusting in, and relying on Jesus, that we continue to put our faith in you and in your mighty works. You have promised, and we seek you in prayer, that your promises would come to pass in our lives. Help us, Lord to walk each and every day as men and women of faith. May your name be glorified through your church. Prepare us for your coming and use us to bring in the harvest of those who would receive you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us today as we studied Matthew 8. May the Lord bless and keep you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's our only hope, and faith in him is the answer to everything we're facing. Be safe. Use the wisdom of God as you avoid trouble in this world and as you trust the Lord to take you through any tests and trials. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Please share the teachings with your friends and family.